Talking to Smart Money, everybody, we have a practicing CPA with us. We're going to talk no, no, about no. taxes. I'm going to stop you right gonna... there. What? We're going to have a former representative, yeah. a congressman with us, who's yeah. written a book called Unaccountable Congress, oh, he's not, he's... talking about the budget deficit yeah. and what's happening with our tax dollars. Yeah. We don't need to do the show anymore. Excellent. But you have to ask me why. Why, honey? Well, because according to our vice president, it's Murphy Brown's fault. Oh, d d don't get me started on Dan Quayle. <laughs> We're very pleased to say that Joe Diaguardi is here. He is the first practicing CPA to serve either in the House or Congress. Now you know why you can't figure out your 1040 <laughs> each year. What's going on in Washington? You know the bucks that used to be in our pocket? We're going to find out from Joe what's going on. Is Congress cheating? Are they making little mistakes? Are they making large mistakes? Are they talking about liability numbers? Are we getting the straight lending numbers? What the heck is going on down there? Because guess who's paying for it? I, get out your credit card. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Oh, boy, are we going to talk about credit cards, because according to our guests, our Congress people have the world's greatest credit card. No limits, never expires, you're gonna show, you're gonna show and they it. bill the kids. We're going to show that very special credit card when we come yes, back. Yes, we are. We can get rid of the debt, but I'm not so sure about our friends oh, a couple of hundred miles to the south of the New York area in Washington. Remember, it's Murphy Brown's fault. But nonetheless, <laughs> we will be back with former Congressman Joe Diaguardi in just a minute. Right back. exploding capital dome trip. Thank you, Edison Concha. We're so pleased that you've joined us here on Smart Money with the Dolans. J. Peter Grace, a former guest right here, who's been on Smart Money, who is the chairman of the W.R. Grace Company, calls our guest one of the great champions of the war on waste. Our guest says, we're talking about plastic budgeting. The sky is the limit when it comes to spending our bucks in Washington, and there may, no be, there may not be any end in sight. Well, maybe. If our guest says his way, maybe there is an end in sight. Well, we're going to find out right now because we're going to introduce you to the author of a fascinating book, Unaccountable Congress, It Doesn't Add Up. He is a former member of the House of Representatives and the only practicing CPA to ever get elected to Congress. Now you know why your taxes are so difficult. Joseph Diaguardi. Joe, nice to have you here. Nice to be here, darling. Now, sure, I'm yeah. holding something that belongs no. to you. It looks familiar. Yes. Where have I seen that face before? This is the credit card you talk about. <laughs> yes. What is this? Sky's what the limit this credit. Do? You know, people don't realize that Congress votes with a plastic card. And when I ran for a vote one day, and I went to reach for it in my wallet, it was right next to my American Express gold card, and it dawned on me, it not only looks like a credit card, it is a credit card. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Because you, you can't the issues. Well, you can't spend anything in government without this card going in to appropriate the money. And since we never have the money for these programs, take this year. Let me put it in perspective. Yeah. The annual budget this year is one trillion four hundred billion dollars. And that's the original estimate. It's gonna go up. The mo the money that we collect, one trillion one hundred billion. Well now wait a minute, let me figure so that out. It's so at least yeah. three hundred yeah, exactly. billion dollars. Yeah. That means when we use that card, we don't have the money to cover the the votes, the bills. What the greatest credit card in the world. Just charge, don't worry about it. But there's a big difference okay. with this credit card and yours. This has no limit. They can raise the debt ceiling anytime they want. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with yours. Yeah, even Hardly. my American Express peters out after five grand and the gold cards exactly. I think cut down at ten thousand. This right. will never end. Well, we we raised the limit just recently to four point one trillion dollars. The national debt is already over three point five mm -hmm. trillion. It's gonna get there. It's mm -hmm. gonna get there, Joe. All right, Joe, we're going to show our viewers a, a little uh, credit card bill that we put together. And this, we want you to talk us through this a little bit. Because sure. this is actually what each one of us owe. So let's take a look at these numbers right now and see what this is costing us. It's a lot of money. Well, I guess we have to stretch just well, a little what are we bit. Doing? What right. are we doing, though, now? We're going to talk about, basically, we're using the credit card Joe's talking about, sort of item by puts item. puts each item one of us on the all. hook. Yeah, exactly. It puts each one of us on the well, hook. The idea of the credit card statement is to personalize this. People fall asleep with you and shock you into reality by telling you that you owe $31,174.84. Let's take a look at it right How now. How the heck does that work? Now, last year, I assume, is the previous balance. That's we owe right. $28,797 each. Our oh. fiscal year begins on October 1st. Okay, gotcha. That's what we owe So that the Congress has spent almost $10,000 in our name. 
That's right. That's your share yep. listed, a combined of Social Security, Defense, the Farm Credit System. What's finance charges? What does that mean? The finance charge is your share of the interest on the national debt. All gotcha. those T-bills and Treasury notes and Treasury right. bonds Wait, are issued. We didn't make any payments here. Yes, you did. No, down 9000 No, you made a payment of right. $9,326 in our taxes last That's right. On average, so, April 15th. On average, Thank okay. you for your prompt payment. <laughs> you got <it> right. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't think we quite covered there, Joe. We're down $31,000 per person. We so, owe more this year than we did last year, and we kicked in 9300 bucks. Absolutely, and that's really the deficit. Mm -hmm. That's the annual deficit, the difference between what we take in and what we spend. It. Every year, that debt goes up. Because we always spend more than we take in. Yeah. What's going to stop it, Joe? Let's just while we're on the subject, I want to talk about check bonds. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. What's going to reverse that thirty-one thousand dollars? Well, discipline right now does not exist in right. Washington, okay. so we have to impose dis discipline. Okay. We try to do it with Graham Rudman. You remember Graham Rudman? Yes. Yeah, sure. Nineteen eighty-six. Forced, forced cuts. Right. You know what you can say about Graham Rudman? R.I.P. Rest in peace. So they got rid of it in nineteen ninety. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do we need now? We need another formula. I believe the balanced budget amendment is an idea whose time is Which would say what? In, well, in which, general. Which would say that you cannot spend more than we take in. Yeah, but Joe, let me ask you, that's a, a wonderful, wonderful thought. But the fact of the matter is, half of, more than half of this is done every year on assumptions. They will assume that they're going to take in more than tax dollars. They're going to assume that they're going to take in more from, from who knows whatever, the but, peace dividend. But can you be 300 million off? And they'll put off? that assumption in, and we're right. still not going to balance this. Easy, Darren. But Easy. we've got to look at it monthly. Right now, they look at it at the beginning of the year and the end of the year. That's not enough. That's one of the gimmicks, by the way, that I talk about in Chapter 2, Plastic Budgeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we need to do a better job. But is that, is that unrealistic, Joe? I mean, again, we're, not, we're not trying to bash Washington. Mm -hmm. can, is there any hope that you and other crusaders like yourself can never get a balanced budget amendment? Yeah. We ain't got it. We're not, we can't mm -hmm. spend it. Can, you can't do it in one year. Uh, okay. It would be severe dis dislocations, human dislocations. Okay. But we need a new type of grand Rudman. We need, let's say, a 10-year plan. Let's tell it like it is. Let's first deal with the things I say in the book. Mm -hmm. Let's bring to bear in government the right kind of accounting system, the right kind of accounting principles, a capital budget, no more off-budget type things. Let's go through the 12 gimmicks that I list. Give, get me, rid of give me one or two. Give me one or two. Do the one. give and take. That's yeah. a beauty. Right. Right. That's a beauty. Do well, the I give mean, and take. One that's even better than that right. is just taking things off budget. Can you imagine this year half the savings and loan bailout yeah. is off the books? If you try to do something off the books and you were the officer of a closely of, of a public You'd be fired. Uh, public, not only fired, you could be indicted in from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, but it's bad news. Let's get it out of the budget. That's the problem. What a we're good trying deal. to disguise. We have spent so much that the real bad news is we're not telling the public the real cost of government. Mm -hmm. And there's something even worse than I just said. Guarantees. We don't measure the cost of guarantees. How did we get the SNL bailout crisis. We didn't measure originally what it would what, what cost if something defaulted. What the liability? But you know how many others we have? And then we, we put the RTC off budget. Half of it? Not? Yes, half yeah. of it. Okay. But you've got the farm credit system. You've got the pension benefit guarantee corporation. Mm -hmm. You've got Ginnie Mae, Fannie Mae. You've got about 12 major programs, mm -hmm. loan programs, that the government guarantees, they're like time bombs ready to go off. But I see one good piece of news, Joe, which I think is great. The House Bank is in great shape. No no bounce checks or anything. Well, not anymore. Well, the House, House Bank down. is R.I.P. Oh, my grand oh, exactly. rest in peace. What effect did that have on us, the check, the check bouncing, if well, any? The good effect is that it finally got the press to focus on the issue of errant behavior in Congress. Okay. And, and there's some symbolism here. It's not just the individual behavior of congressmen and congresswomen. It's the fact that they do this with the collective checkbook called the budget of the United States yeah. of America. No. Okay, let's go back to that house banking for a minute, because you're a CPA, certified public accountant. You did taxes for 20 odd years as a partner of a major firm. Right. I'll say big eight, but there's no more big eight. Big six. Big six. R I P. Okay. There we go again. <laughs> Seems to me that if I continue to bounce checks at my local bank and my bank continues to cover for me, the IRS is going to come in and say, whoa, wait a minute, bank on the corner. You're giving this woman a loan. We want to get paid. She owes income taxes on the money she was given during this time of bouncing checks. Is anybody going to call these members of Congress? I don't care whether they intended to do it or not. 900 checks. They had 900 loans outstanding. Is the IRS going to come after them the way it would after us? It's a good point. Technically, there may have been an interest-free loan here, mm -hmm. and, uh, and at least the interest portion should have been declared as some kind of a uh, as a perk. 
Uh, and by the way, you know, there's still a special prosecutor looking into all of this. Mm -hmm. And now we hear that there was may he have hired well... hired by Congress? Uh, well, uh, I think there was a combination deal. I think we can trust this guy. He's going okay. after him. Okay. But, Joe, somebody might say, you're a congressman, and I'm not trying to beat you up here, 85, 86, 87, 88. Aren't you part of this? I don't mean you, but aren't no. all of you former people part of it? I tried to change it. By the way, uh -huh. you know, the check bouncing thing didn't just happen this year. Mm -hmm. Did you bounce the, checks? I didn't bounce one, thank God. I've got a piece okay. of paper. I, 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 I sometimes carry it with me. That says okay. I didn't bounce any checks. Okay. Uh, having written a book like this, I had to request. I wanted to know. Can you imagine waiting home for the mail? It's like your college days. Yeah. Where test now you publish Where is my letter? Out, that's right. <laughs> but uh, the point is I didn't. The, um, the, the issue is that we, we have a, uh, uh, a problem uh, with, with the check balancing scandal that goes beyond just the checks. It's the process. Nobody should have put in charge of the House Bank a political hack, the doorkeeper. You needed someone who was professionally trained. How about to, a banker, John? Why not? Why well, now, they're looking for, now they're looking for an administrator in charge of non-legislative uh, functions for the House and an inspector general. I tried to bring those functions to bear in 1988, and in the back of the book, you'll see the legislation that I proposed. I also proposed a chief financial officer for the United States of America. Well, you got nice some idea. They, you got got some they passed nerd. that finally in 1990. Amazing. Right, but Congress them. doesn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a lot of guys from BCCI who are around. Never mind. Maybe they That's can get them Our guest, Joe DiAguardi, unaccountable Congress. <laughs> I'm Joe DiOguardi. In Congress, they use this card to vote, but they've turned it into the most expensive credit card in the world, with no limit, and you get the bill. It's a ticking time bomb that cripples the economy, stops job creation, and will make us poor. I'm a certified public accountant to get spending under control and to stop this credit card madness that's costing us jobs and the American dream.